Hey Model Kit Builders, I was in the middle of reviewing these Gundam Micro Wars things and these things were on these runners and I left the nubs on because I got this in the mail. This is a sanding device that I got off AliExpress. It came in a padded envelope, it didn't come in a box or anything like that. It was very well padded, like an obscene amount of padding. So I, I suspect it's going to work. But it does have this piece of paper in Chinese, which obviously isn't going to help out. But the back side here does say something. It's not rotary. It's like a linear vibration, which is different from my, uh, my de facto is my display thing with uh, the sanding disc on it. And this does work, uh, but I just wanted to try something else. Okay, uh, some specs, not so important. So let's uh, get this out of this bag here. It's a padded thing there. And then you have a power supply. And then coincidentally, you have these tools that are also on runners. So actually, let me use my, uh, my cheaper, cheaper clippers. So three, four, five, six, seven tools, I guess. So these tools seem to be like a nylon reinforced plastic. That's the impression I'm getting there. All right, let's see. Let's undo this stuff. Well, I guess these are here. Oh, this is the annoying. EU. I hate this. This is the, like the worst type of plug. They never really sit in a, an outlet very well. I prefer the two blade style like you'd find in North America or Japan. Alright, well anyways, that's gonna, this has a pretty long cable here. Well, let me clip that off. I would say that's a half meter long. It's hard to. The camera's way too big, but uh, I mean, the camera. The, the view is way too big. There are the ends, so maybe that's a quarter of a, a meter times two. If I had to guess, it's around half a meter. And then this thing might be adding another half a meter. So you might be able to get like a meter away from something, uh, meaning your a wall outlet or a power strip could be a meter away, and you still might be able to use this. All right, so you got a nice uh, round connector. It's pretty much idiot proof, right? Just there you go. And now I gotta plug this in. Before I plug that in, let's look at these tools. So we have a round tool here, and you'll see the angle. All right, this is. Uh, interesting. It's like a round bar, so if you want to sand like a channel, you know, you can do that. That's an interesting idea. A triangular tool that's straight out, perpendicular to the vibration shaft here. And then this is like a rounded, or it's kind of like an ellipse that's been cut off on the ends. So kind of like a sandwich bun, I guess, but that's perpendicular to the vibration shaft. This is an angled uh, triangle okay this is a square but it's angled and then this is the square that's totally straight out so I guess the only issue is like why is there not a round one that's straight out the round one's only at an angle so keep that in mind unless maybe I'm missing a tool I'm not sure but it did come with these two pieces of uh, sandpaper already pre-cut and they have adhesive backings on them. So let's see how easy it is to get such onto those tools. So pop that out. It doesn't say what grid it is. It feels pretty rough though, I can tell you that. Uh, so this one goes here. Yeah, it doesn't want to slide. Pretty good adhesive there. Boy, if, I'm trying to guess what grid that would be. 180 maybe? Uh, I have no idea. Maybe if you find this on AliExpress it will say what grid it is. But it definitely feels a little bit rough for uh, plastic model kits. And that's why I'm testing it out on these little 
Gundam things, not a real Gundam kit. Just these Micro Wars things. I don't care about them so much. Alright, well, it seems pretty easy to put these uh, things on. Let me just peel off nicely from that main sheet. And. I might as well prep all these, right? And we're going to try them all. Triangle. So, I don't know about this one though. I, I don't think that's going to wrap properly, right? Well, I guess we'll slap it on there and see what happens. I'm going to start in the middle. And just wrap it like that. Or maybe... Like up here. I guess that's the intention. It doesn't... Uh, collide too much with the shaft holding it on so I guess you're just supposed to use these square ones for that okay well anyways so obviously if you run out of these you could just put double-sided tape on the back of any sheet of sandpaper you cut it extra and then you use some scissors and you just cut off the extra sandpaper that's, that's what I plan to do I'm not sure if you can buy these pre-cut shapes separately or not uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to change the grid. Alright, I think a logical one to begin with would be maybe this triangle one. And so this plastic thing here, you can see the keyway here matches. And then what do I do? Twist this? Or maybe it was... I think, uh, oh, one side. Oh, I see. You gotta look in there. This. There, it's open now. So, how would I describe that? If you have the sticker here, if you twist this towards the sticker, that opens it. And so I can pop this in now. And then I want to twist it back. There. So now it's more like in line with the body here, and that means it's locked. You would think they'd have like an index or something like that, but no. Alright, so then there's just a rocker switch. And this gold foil sticker is so shiny, it's difficult to even read it. It says 8,000 linear strokes, 4 sanding arbors with straight shanks and 4 angles. So there's supposed to be 8 of these tools and I'm missing one of them. That's too bad. Alright. Uh, it says 18 volts and, no, 18 watts maybe? And supply voltage is 12. 12 volts input. All right, so the no load speed is 8,000 8, linear strokes. So uh, the more pressure you put on it, you'll probably get less strokes out of it. And then here's the power control, I guess. And this adapter can use, work in anywhere in the world, basically 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. And it'll do two amps, which obviously this is not gonna pull. So just gonna pop that in an outlet up above me. All right. Huh. Right now, nothing. I'm turn twisting this. Uh... All right. Unfortunately, the wall outlet's so far away, so I gotta unplug that again. This thing actually has a switch. Click. Right. I had it off, so now it's on. We'll just leave it at minimum, I guess, and see if I can turn it on now. Hold on. So that's plugged into the wall again. Alright, so that's actually vibrating very slow. Um, so here's the... Here's the nub on this hand. Yeah, it's slowly going through it, but painfully slow. Um, so let me ro rotate this power thing to a higher speed. You can hear it change. Now that's at full speed. I don't know if the camera's going to focus though, hold on. I can't focus on this white piece. There we go.
I'm just definitely cutting, sanding through that plastic pretty fast. Okay, unfortunately I don't think that's the right tool for this. The tip is, you know, going off the nub. So, quick uh, change of this, to rotate that, pop that out. Well, let's go with the square one. Uh, let's go with the angled square one. Twist that back, it's locked in. I gotta say, this, this twist thing feels very weak. I mean, look at the gap up here versus down there. So, <laughs> the product quality isn't so high. This wasn't the really expensive thing though, so. All right, let's, let's try to blaze through this one. You can see, even at the highest speed, with a relatively coarse grit, it's taken a while. But I guess it depends on how much pressure you put down, right? I'm going to put some more pressure on this one. Well, it definitely works. Actually, you probably want to do this over like a vacuum thing so that you don't breathe in plastic dust. I just I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So you clearly saw that it does work. Um, you know, changing out the sandpaper is going to affect how smooth it ultimately sands. But I feel like at this grit, uh, it's actually quite slow. I almost kind of think I want to have a coarser grit and then I'll finish it off with like a, a polishing uh, stick. You know, something like like this for uh, manicures. So I'll just rough it like that. And I'll just sand the whole thing. Actually, here's another one. I, like, I prefer this one. You can just buy it. This is 603,000. So 600 rough gives it a pretty smooth finish, but then this white side, this 3000, it's really not a deep, it's just foam I think. That really shines it up back to like the original sheen of the plastic, which uh, actually I probably don't want. So I think that's how I'm probably going to use it. I'm going to use the coarser grit with the machine, you know, then go over the nubs with this green thing and do that twice. All right. So let me uh, go find some other things here. So I think a clear plastic box is a really good way to see what's happening, right? So let me uh, switch this square one out and let's try a round one. Or you know what? Well, we'll get to that channel one last. So we'll switch this round one here, pop that in, twist this back. There we go. And let's just see how it messes up this clear. So 
that's it. it has to do with what angle you're holding the thing down and having it facing me, I, I'm not doing that evenly. You can see, you know, the lines. It's, it's not moving in a circular pattern. It's, it's only like wiggling it, it seems. It's not a. It's not moving around in and out. It's only moving side to side, which I think for the price of this thing is to be expected. What's interesting is that these are plastic and not metal. You know, because this is definitely flexing. It's even wobbling inside of this thing. So you're not going to get the most precise sanding just in the fact that the tool will deviate a couple millimeters actually. So. Uh, I don't know if you'd want to go sanding into corners so much on a on a really nice model kit. I'm going back to that. Let's pop in this corner triangle thing. So I'm going to pretend like this is a rough surface and uh, try to sand into it. I gotta say, actually, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, you know, if you had some weird, like, extra paint in there or something like that, it'll definitely flatten it out. So, uh, that actually worked a lot better than I thought it would. Alright, so, triangle one's pretty good for getting into corners. This one, though, a weird channel maker, or sanding a channel. Yeah, all right, there's nothing saying that's not going to work if you have some sort of rounded uh, recess. So I guess that's fine. Just matters what grid of paper, sandpaper you put on the thing. All right, well, that's it for the angled ones. I think the angled ones are the most intuitive. I, I, I'm not sure why I would want to have one just straight perpendicular like this, unless you're literally going in from the side. Well, it works, and I, I guess. The benefit of this one is it's not going to flex, you know, because it's not at an angle, it's just you're pushing right into it. So that's the benefit of this particular style of tool. Okay. So the whole body seems to be nylon reinforced plastic, if I had to guess. It just has that look to it, like a, like a office chair or a, yeah. It's called the S-Lite, but it wasn't listed as an S-Lite. It's just a generic sander. Uh, the cable here, eh, it's okay. Um, so, I guess that's it. Uh, I have no intention to really sand wood. Wood would be uh, harder in most cases than this plastic, so you just basically have to switch out to a much coarser sandpaper if you get the harder the material you're going to go with. Uh, this material seems okay actually for Gundams. It's just that you're going to have to go over it with another you know, thing to make it actually look smooth. So, all in all, I guess I'm happy with this. Hopefully uh, you, you saw what I did and you can decide for yourself if you want it or not. It's not very heavy and uh, it's almost like a pen, so it seems okay. And you can obviously hold it in, in different ways. So, alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tool related video.